Well, let's get back to one of our top stories this morning. Police say that they've busted an alleged plot to blow up the B.C. legislature. Now, the Mounties have arrested a couple in what they say is an Al-Qaeda-inspired plan of terror. So for more insight and information, we're joined by our international security expert, Alex Holstein of geopolitical.com. Alex, a long time no see. Good to see you again. How are you? Good to uh, see you. Bad circumstance to have to talk to you. I mean, domestic terrorism. Yes, but in this case, stopped before it happened, which is a good thing. And uh, congratulations to the RC. CMP and the Canadian uh, Security Service, the CSIS, uh, for, for stopping this attack. Okay, they say they were in tight control of the bomb, bombs, and that's why it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. How? I mean, these were pressure cooker bombs, yeah. very much like, I guess, what was happening in Boston, made of everyday things like nails. How do you have tight control? Well, they could be referring to the type of surveillance that they had on the uh, on the suspects at that time. Uh, at the time of the plot unfolding, uh, they could have they could have had a very tight surveillance net around them, been ready to bust them at any time they saw those bombs going into action, so to speak, or being moved or staged, so to speak. Um, the other thing is they might have even been uh, controlling the actual equipment being sold to them. Who knows? I mean, if uh, there was any sort of explosive type equipment, they might have been sold inert uh, type equipment if the police had gotten in on it early enough to, to get in on the sort of bomb making distribution or uh, uh, to get in on the sale of that uh, equipment. Now, I, I, I haven't seen any reports. Is this a lone wolf situation or is it bigger than what we think? This is this is, looks like a lone wolf situation, much like what we had in, in the Boston Marathon bombing, which in the Boston Marathon bombing, it was, it was, it was kind of um, confusing because there was a Chechen element and the, the guys had traveled to Chechnya. This looks completely contained uh, and, and looks like a complete lone wolf situation and possibly completely internet inspired. Again, we, we see uh, more and more radicalization through the internet. This was something that Anwar al-Awlaki, who was the leader of Al-Qaeda in the Yemen and Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, uh, was a big proponent of um, uh, internet radicalization. He's dead now. He was, he was killed in a drone strike, but uh, he was a big proponent of this kind of uh, radicalization. And it also shows, though, Pat, importantly, that Canada is not immune to uh, terrorism, lone wolf terrorism, or any kind of terrorism. It is a target. You, know, you don't really, I, I don't really concern myself with the motivations of people like these retail terrorists at the, at the end uh, sort of of the of the manufacturing line. They're they're the they're the guys that go out and do suicide bombings. I care more about the core. I care more about wholesale. I care more about the motivations of people like Ayman Al Zawahiri who run Al Qaeda Core or the Anwar Al Awlakis. And these guys, their ideology is that anyone who doesn't uh, adhere to their form of radical Islam, Salafist Islam, uh, is an infidel, including mainstream Muslims, and uh, they they were dead. That's that you're either with us or you're dead. That's their whole philosophy. It's very nihilistic, almost psychopathic, and that's what we're dealing with. If they're spreading the message out through the internet, I mean, we've got all this controversy about uh, surveillance happening, for instance, down in the United States with the National Security uh, Agency there and, and the leaks that came out. But mm -hmm. I mean, here might very well be a case where they're monitoring what's happening on the internet to find out and to foil this kind of a plot. Yeah, especially since it's two foreigners. I mean, the NSA, this is the, just the type of case in case these guys were planning a cross-border attack, that the NSA would be looking at two foreigners, Canadian citizens in this case, operating on foreign territory. This would be within the spectrum of a FISA warrant uh, like the NSA had for other cases where they would use that larger scale data, that metadata of just a list of telephone numbers, which is all they had, uh, and matching it to uh, known terrorists, foreigners, uh, numbers and cross-referencing and using that to pinpoint uh, connections and connect the dots and stop uh, terror attacks. It's very damaging what Edward Snowden did uh, to our counterterrorism posture in the United States. Yeah, not just the United States, but obviously it, yeah, uh, here uh, demonstrated yeah. here in Canada. Uh, does does the RCMP or CSIS or anybody else actually actively uh, monitor, I don't know, bomb-making sites? I mean, they must have been using some kind of a site to mm -hmm. build the pressure cooker bombs. I would hope so. I, I would hope so. Now, I know that Richard Fadden, the, the head of uh, CSIS, has been uh, very uh, dogged and uh, uh, very vehement in his, in his statements that, that uh, Al-Qaeda is a threat to Canada. And I think that that 
seeps through the rest of the organization. I think CSIS is very much keeping an eye on, on uh, possible terrorist attacks, obviously, uh, fa uh, that Canada faces and uh, are doing a good job thus far. Okay, now these two people are in their late 30s, late 20s. I mean, what do people uh, need to look for, the average uh, citizen need to look for in terms of you know, seeing these things red flagged mm -hmm. overall. Can well, we help? Can yeah, an average I mean, citizen help? There are ways. I mean, one of the ways is, is if you see, you know, someone buying, uh, what, you know, the types of materials one would use to build an ANFO bomb or a pressure cooker bomb. I mean, and on the small scale like this, it's hard to spot. But, you know, the Timothy McVeigh type comes along and starts buying a, a, an incredible amount of ammonium or whatever that goes into an ANFO bomb uh, that, you know, the person selling it to him might, you know, might think twice and then give a call to the FBI, or in this case, the RCMP. Okay. Alex, good advice. Thank you very much. Great to have you back. Cheers. Alex Holstein, uh, counterterrorism uh, expert of geopolitical.com.